Thank you, Madam Speaker. As the daughter of a single mother, I grew up in and out of foster care. Oftentimes I was hungry and sometimes homeless. So I've known poverty. But I've also known hope. My grandfather was a World War II veteran, a Tuskegee trainee who married a fiery redhead from Idaho. He was a contractor, a mason who worked hard every day to provide for his family. But that hard work didn't protect him from racism or bigotry, and it didn't protect his children or his grandchildren. Yet, my grandparents instilled in me a powerful notion that anyone can grow up to be anything they dream to be, even a member of the House of Representatives. I stand before you the product of this state's investment in the American dream. A dream that would not have been possible if not for the struggles of Dr. King and those who marched beside him. Dr. King said, we cannot walk alone. He blazed a path so that we could walk together. Marching toward a world free from racism, free from bigotry, free from hatred. That walk, that march, it wasn't easy for him, and it wasn't easy for those who walked beside him. It took courage to face beatings. It took bravery to march on in the face of death threats and arrests. And we know that the work that he started will never be finished. The spirit of Dr. King lives on inside every one of us who dare to stand up for what we believe in. <clears throat> it lives on in everyone who puts faith in the notion that every hardworking human being, regardless of race, color, or creed, deserves to be treated with respect. That word, faith. It deserves fresh meaning in this time of political divisiveness. There were those who lost faith when Dr. King was beaten and attacked, even more who lost their faith when he was assassinated. But you know, Dr. King never lost faith, not his faith in God, not his faith in the cause, and not his faith in the people who marched beside him. Because we cannot walk alone. We must all march together and I'm not talking about legislators, Madam Speaker. If Dr. King taught us anything, it's that the civil rights movement isn't about us. It's about our children and working families. It's about farm workers and laborers in the Columbia Basin, bus drivers bringing our kids to school. It's about police officers and teachers like my sister-in-law and grocery store clerks who put up with my kids in the checkout line at Fred Meyer. In every corner of this great state, working moms and dads are just trying to pay the mortgage, they're trying to put food on the table, and they're trying to save to send their kids to college. You see, that's the promise, the dream of America, that it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, who or where you worship. Every family deserves the opportunity to work hard and make it. We cannot lose sight of the people that we serve in the work that we do in this chamber. You see, Dr. King believed that that which connects us so much stronger than that which divides us. So 
So we must have faith. Faith in ourselves and faith in each other. Because I still remember the lessons that Dr. King taught, as a, taught me as a small girl growing up in Moses Lake. A girl who finds herself here in this chamber working in the people's house. So I tell you today that I still have faith, that I remember the dream, and I pray that I will not walk alone. <laughs>